So today is the first day of spring and I want to talk to you about the performance of my solar panels in January and February of 2022 and how that compares with the performance of the solar panels exactly one year earlier for the same months. I also want to talk to you about the impact of partial shading on the performance of solar panels and I've got an interesting experiment to perform and demonstrate to you guys later on. Now if you haven't watched my previous videos, hello I'm Anthony. I commissioned a 9 kilowatt solar panel array here in Aberdeenshire in November 2020 and I've got lots of uh, previous videos which describe the setup, the operation, the performance and the economics and value generated from these solar panels over that period of time. January 2022 performed a lot better than the previous year overall. This year January generated just over 142 kilowatt hours compared to 130 kilowatt hours last year. Brighter weather is the principal reason for the better performance, but if we take a closer look at the figures, we can see two key differences. We consumed a lot more electricity this year, over 530 kilowatt hours of it, and that compares to just over 260 kilowatt hours last year. All told, only 22% of our electricity consumed was provided by our solar panels compared to 38% last year. Now the key difference between this year and last year is the fact that I've now got an electric car. Of the 423 kilowatt hours invoiced on my bill, over 277 kilowatt hours of that was charged at the cheap overnight rate. And that cost me just over £13. The remainder was 146 kilowatt hours and that compares to 161 kilowatt hours for import the year before. It's not significantly different and it's mainly a function of how many days I spent away from home as well as two power blackouts totaling nearly 24 hours. The other difference is that we exported less electricity. 30 kilowatt hours was exported in 2021 compared to 22 kilowatt hours in 2022. That difference is most strongly illustrated by the sunniest days of the month. On the left we have got the 23rd of January 2021 and on the right we have got the 24th of January 2021. The, the very similar days in terms of generation but they look very different in terms of utilization. That electric car is making such days far more valuable in terms of utilizing every unit of electricity from my panels instead of exporting it at a far less valuable price. If we were to take a closer look at the exported amount, it would reveal that these corresponded with days when I wasn't actually at home for those sunny periods. Now November, December and January were all days that cost me in total about £160 worth of electricity imports. So what of February? February 2022 and 2021 were fairly similar in terms of generation. We generated 330 kilowatt hours in 2021 and that compares to 342 kilowatt hours in 2022. A difference of 12 kilowatt hours isn't all that much. We consumed more electricity in 2022 of course but actually quite a lot less than January and that reflects the fact that the car wasn't being driven as much. To illustrate that fact there was only one night where the car was charged up from the grid. That was the 5th of February and you can see here that we've uh, been uh, taking a lot of electricity uh, in the uh, cheap overnight period. So following on from previous videos where I introduced this portable battery and demonstrated its value in a blackout, I'm also using this battery now to run my home entertainment system in the evening time. The result of that is that for each evening I've managed to transfer an extra kilowatt hour of electricity from imported grid to daytime solar power generation. As a result, over 68% of our electricity consumed came from our solar panels which is a lot higher than the 56% seen in the previous year. Taking a closer look at the figures we can see a lot more electricity was exported in 2021, 
161 kilowatt hours and that compares to just 66 kilowatt hours in 2022. In the first 20 days of February, export was exclusively attributed again to me being away from home. However, what we see from the 21st of February onwards is that I'm now exporting electricity to the grid in spite of the fact that I'm not actually away from home. This is the point in the year reached where we are finally exporting more electricity than what we need for charging up the car. The result of that was that on the 23rd of February, I switched again from the Octopus Go tariff to the Octopus Agile tariff. Now that means that I'm gonna be paying more money for import. I'll be paying 35 pence per kilowatt hour for every unit of electricity imported from the grid. But offset against that is the fact that I'll be getting paid a lot more money for export in today's market. On the Octopus Go tariff, I'm getting paid 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour for exported electricity to the grid. On the flexible Agile tariff, that price is much closer to 15 to 20 pence per kilowatt hour. The other thing to note about the import price on the Octopus Agile tariff is that it compares favorably compared to the latest fixed price offers that you can get from Octopus Energy. Those are around 35 and a half pence per kilowatt hour. So even in the worst case scenario with Octopus Agile, you're paying less money than you are on fixed price tariffs. And those fixed price tariffs also give you an indication of what's likely to happen to flexible tariffs when Ofgem raises the price cap in April. Everyone is going to be paying an awful lot more money for importers electricity. And that just goes to illustrate how valuable having solar panels on your rooftop is right now. Now I paid about 160 pounds in terms of imported electricity. And I'm hoping that with the export from now until the middle of October, that I'll be clawing back that 160 pounds in the coming months. And maybe I'll also have some surplus left over, which can also offset the cost of propane gas, which was used for heating my house in the winter time. Now, it's been a mild winter, and the result of that is that for the whole year, I've consumed only 700 litres of propane gas. When you compare that to the time when I moved into this house over 12 years ago, at the time, I was consuming two and a half thousand litres. Now, the winters back then were a lot colder, of course. However, 700 litres is still excellent. And I don't think it's just mild winters which can be attributed to that consumption. The fact that I've got a hot water solar controller and the fact that I've got an induction cooker now makes a difference. But I think one of the biggest differences is the fact that I've added a lot of wall insulation to the kitchen, as I demonstrated in my uh, video in June. Now with the contract price at just under 43 pence a kilowatt hour, that has meant that my propane gas consumption has costed me 300 pounds this year. That I think is uh, excellent. I'm more used to paying uh, over a thousand pounds a year for propane gas. Now partial shading is important to understand because the performance of one panel has an impact on the performance of all the other panels on your rooftop solar array if you don't have solar panel optimizers. In this example right here, we can see that some of these uh, cells are partially shaded. All these cells are connected in a string. For older panels, all the cells will be connected in one big long string. But this is a modern panel. Um, what we have here is a, a bus bar going right up the middle. So we have separate strings here, and then we have another string uh, going along here. And uh, each of those strings, if they're not producing as much output, they can be bu uh, bypassed. But you only need one cell to be covered in shade, and then all the other cells in your string will uh, suffer in terms of output. So we're going to uh, wait for the shadow of uh, the building to completely clear this, and then we're going to do some uh, experiments in terms of uh, partial shading. So I purchased uh, this meter here to uh, measure the current and the voltage more accurately, along with the actual power. 
the information on the battery itself does not contain that information and it doesn't show uh, useful power for very low outputs. Now this cost me about £17 and then in addition um, I had MC4 connectors which I needed to crimp on to uh, each of these uh, uh, wires uh, going to it. So with most of the panel covered we have got about 50 watts of output in this configuration. So here we've got just under half of the panel exposed and the outputs increased to uh, just over 80 watts of uh, power. Let's see what happens when we've got just over half of the panel exposed. So with the main central bus bar uh, now exposed, we have now got 115 watts of uh, power uh, generated from this panel. So here in this configuration, we've got the vast majority of the uh, panel exposed to sunlight and we've only got uh, two columns of cells uh, covered up. And here we've got 145 watts of uh, power being produced. And then for reference, this is the whole panel exposed. We've got now double the power output. We've got uh, 290 watts to 300 watts of uh, power being produced now. So now we're going to reveal the panel uh, from top to bottom. And at the moment, we've got uh, 16 watts of uh, power being produced. So now we've got uh, 50 watts of power with the first row of uh, cells being exposed. So with the second row of cells exposed, uh, we've still got 50 watts of power. There's no increase. So with the third row exposed, we've now got 90 watts of power. Now with the fourth row, we've got 200 watts of power. So just one extra row of uh, solar cells exposed uh, increases the power by 100 watts. Okay, so with all but the final rows ex exposed, uh, we've got 200 watts of uh, power being produced. And then with all rows exposed, just for reference, uh, we've got 315 watts of uh, power being produced. So what I think we can determine from this is that when uh, the solar panel is revealed from top to bottom, the performance of the panel increases in a linear fashion uh, with uh, area exposed. But when the sunshine is revealed on the solar panel from left to right, the performance of the solar panel does not increase in a linear fashion. It's uh, more of a quadratic uh, expression than a linear fashion. So the orientation of the panel in relation to the progression of any shading on that panel really has a big impact as to uh, how these panels are going to perform. Um, and I hope uh, this uh, provides uh, a little bit of an insight as to uh, how these uh, panels uh, actually behave. So that's all I have for this video. My Solar Edge Energy Bank is still earmarked for delivery in April time. But in the meantime, I'm going to be taking my car out on another holiday. And this time I'm going to be taking it on a ferry across to the Outer Hebrides. And I'm hoping that's going to be an excellent opportunity to demonstrate the performance of this car and also uh, have a few nice sightseeing trips along the way. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.